Norway's AW-101 fleet, known affectionately as the Saar Queen, represents a cornerstone of the nation's modern search and rescue capabilities. Born from a strategic initiative launched on October 25, 2007, to replace the aging Westland Sea King helicopters by 2020. After a rigorous procurement process, the Norwegian government signed a tract with Augusta Westland, now Leonardo Helicopters, on December 19, 2013, for 16 AW101 helicopters, beating out fierce competition from Eurocopter, NH Industries, Sikorsky, and Boeing. Valued at approximately 6.25 billion NOK, around 1 billion USDs at the time, the deal included spares, training, and a 15-year support package, with lifecycle costs estimated at 29 to 39 billion NOK through 2050. The AW101 was selected for its superior ability to meet Norway's demanding all-weather SAR requirements, particularly in the harsh Arctic and maritime environments of the High North. By March 2025, the fleet is likely fully delivered, marking a significant upgrade from the Sea Kings, which were phased out in December 2023 after 47 years of service. The procurement journey began with the first AW101 delivery in November 2017, though it faced an early setback when the helicopter overturned during ground testing at Sola Air Base, requiring repairs at Leonardo's Yeovil facility. Subsequent deliveries progressed steadily, with 11 units in place by May 2021 and the 15th arriving in 2023. The final, 16th helicopter was expected by late 2024, aligning with the transition to full operational capability across six Royal Norwegian Air Force bases, Sola, Orland, Banak, Bodø, Riga, and Flora. The AW101 officially entered rescue service on September 1st, 2020, with Sola as the first operational base, followed by Orland in May 2021 and others by 2024. This phase deployment ensured nationwide coverage, a critical factor given Norway's vast coastline and remote Arctic regions. The helicopters, operated by 330 Squadron under the Ministry of Justice and Public Security, are equipped with advanced features like the Osprey ESA radar, dual rescue hoists, and an icing protection system, enabling them to excel in extreme conditions where the Sea Kings struggled. Training for the AW101 fleet has been a priority, underscored by the opening of the AW101 Norway Training Center at Stavanger Sola Air Station on June 12, 2017, announced by then Minister Per Willy Amundsen. Jointly developed by Leonardo and CAE, the center features a Level D full flight simulator and a linked SAR console training system for rear crew, offering comprehensive preparation before the first rotorcraft even arrived. This facility, used by both Norwegian and international AW101 operators, reflects Norway's commitment to operational excellence and positions it as a regional hub for SAR training. By 2023, with 15 helicopters delivered, the fleet had fully integrated into Norway's SAR operations, surpassing initial performance expectations, according to Leonardo's reports. The AW101s have enhanced response times, extended range over 1,000 kilometers, and improved onboard medical support, proving their worth in routine missions across Norway's challenging terrain. The AW101's role extends beyond SAR to include air ambulance services and societal support during emergencies, leveraging its advanced technology to address Norway's unique geographic and climatic challenges. Deployed across the six bases, the fleet ensures rapid response capability, with Benox Arctic location highlighting its strategic importance near Russia's border. Recent operations, while not detailed with specific high-profile missions post-2023, demonstrate the fleet's reliability in all weather conditions, a marked improvement over the Sea King's limitations. Looking ahead, Norway's plans include sustaining the fleet through Leonardo's 15-year support contract to around 2038, with potential upgrades to the AW101 6 and 12 variant. There's also speculation fueled by ex-posts from February 2025 of negotiations with the UK for AW101s configured for anti-submarine warfare, possibly tied to Type 26 frigate acquisitions. 
This could expand the fleet's role, filling gaps left by the 2022 cancellation of the NH-90 program, though no firm commitment has emerged by March 2025. Comparing Norway's AW101 fleet to regional competitors offers a broader perspective on its standing. Sweden, for instance, operates 15 Sikorsky UH-60M Black Hawks for SAR and utility roles, acquired between 2011 and 2013 for about 750 million USD. While versatile and faster in some scenarios, top speed of 295 kilometers per hour versus the AW101's 277 kilometers per hour, the Black Hawk lacks the AW101's range, 611 kilometers versus 1,389 kilometers, and specialized SAR equipment, making it less suited for Sweden's maritime needs compared to Norway's Arctic focus. Denmark, meanwhile, uses 14 EH-101 Merlerlins, a W-101 variants, for SAR and troop transport, delivered between 2001 and 2009 for roughly 400 million pounds. Denmark's Merlins share the AW-101's long-range capability, but lack the advanced icing protection of Norway's SAR Queen, limiting their effectiveness in extreme northern climates. Finland relies on older NH-90s and smaller platforms like the AS-33032 Super Puma, which, with a range of light 831 kilometers and less advanced avionics, falls short of the AW-101's all-weather prowess. Especially after Finland's NH-90s faced reliability issues similar to Norway's terminated program. Regionally, the AW-101 stands out for its tailored design and operational flexibility. The UK, with over 40 AW101 Merlins, the SR and ASW variants, offers a closer parallel, but its fleet serves broader military roles rather than Norway's SAR-centric mission. Norway's investment in training infrastructure and its focus on Arctic operations give it an edge in specialized SAR over Sweden and Denmark, while Finland's less advanced fleet lags in capability. Cost-wise, Norway's AW101 program is pricier up front, over $1 billion versus Sweden's 750 million pounds or Denmark's 400 million, but its life cycle cost reflects a long-term commitment to a premium platform. The potential ASW expansion could further distinguish Norway, aligning its fleet with NATO's multi-role needs, though it risks overlap with its MH60R Seahawk acquisition for maritime duties. In conclusion, Norway's AW101 fleet, fully operational by 2025, represents a state-of-the-art SAR capability, surpassing its predecessor and regional peers in range, technology, and environmental adaptability. Its procurement, supported by robust training and sustainment plans, reflects a strategic vision that balances immediate needs with future flexibility. While competitors like Sweden and Denmark offer cost-effective alternatives, they lack the AW101's specialized edge, positioning Norway as a leader in regional SAR and potentially beyond if ASW plans materialize. As the fleet matures, its role in Norway's security framework will likely deepen, cementing the SAR Queen's reign over the high north.